Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Tara and I am a mom of two boys, Lincoln who is three and Lucas who is 14 months. Today's video is going to be our Montessori playroom tour and I am so excited to show you guys our playrooms and yes that is plural because there are two spaces that I'm showing you today. It's a sort of a bonus uh, area that I'm tacking on to this video. So not only are you guys going to see our downstairs play area, but I'm also going to take you upstairs to our loft that I've turned into what I'm calling our movement zone. So that it has like our pickler triangle and our nugget and things like that. So stay tuned, make sure you watch to the end to see the bonus footage of our movement area. Now, as you can imagine, having two kids, we are always in our playroom and finding time to film in here when it's clean is pretty much impossible. So right now it is pretty late at night and this is the only time I'm gonna find to film, so I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit weird, but it's just what we have to go with being moms and trying to work around everything. So everything's clean and ready to show you, so come along with me and let's take a look at our playroom. Okay, we're starting out the tour in our reading area. So in this area, I've put a bean bag with some cozy pillows for a spot for the boys to be able to sit and read. And uh, the bookshelves we have are the Ikea ones. This allows the books to be forward facing so that the boys can easily see and access any of the books that they want. I also have Lucas's books on the bottom and Lincoln's on the top. So just based on height that they're easy to grab and access what, they, what books they want to be reading. Okay, now we are moving over to our shelves and we have the Ikea cube shelves. These are great for a Montessori playroom because they are low open shelves that are at a child height. So they're easily able to access all of their toys and the toys are all displayed at eye level. So they don't, they don't have like large bins or cabinets that keep them from seeing what's inside. And this is really key for um, Montessori shelving. So this allows the boys to be able to spend more time seeing and playing with their toys and less time digging through like a toy box full of toys and pulling out everything just to find one thing that they're looking for. Um, I also want to note that Montessori playrooms typically have a limited number of toys or activities out. So we have a storage room in our basement where I keep the majority of our toys and I rotate the toys on the shelves as needed. Um, I don't have a strict schedule for rotation. So some toys, you know, they might, it might only be out a week where other toys that they're still mastering or still engaged with may stay out for several months. I don't keep a lot on the very top of the shelf, but as you can see, it's Christmas time, so we do have a few Christmas decorations that aren't normally there. Um, we have our Yoto player up here. My three-year-old is able to access this. Um, I have a sign that says, let's just play. That's more for me and for like the aesthetic of the playroom than for the boys. Um, their artwork I try to keep at their level. We have our Grimm's rainbow and our sandpaper numbers. Um, my son, my three-year-old really likes to pull those out for counting and different things. And then we have some plants over here. Um, my three-year-old really loves to help water these plants. So they've, they've been a good addition to our playroom. Moving uh, to the floor, I have a basket in the corner that has our scarves in it and this Lego um, mat <laughs> that we can use for our Legos. And at the very top, I have a little bin with some blocks in it and then one with our Legos. Now this is a pretty big Lego bin. I'm actually cutting, going to get rid of that many Legos. I think that's too many. I think a smaller bin like the one you see here for the magnet tiles is perfect. Then for my one-year-old, I have some language cards here. This is a mix of the Love Every ones and also some from like the My First cards. My one-year-old was really, he really loves to pull these out and we talk about, you know, the different things on the cards. The next thing is this magnet 
activity that I have for my three-year-old. Um, one thing I want to say about this is I typically display this in an unfinished way. So it would normally be like taken apart um, or like everything would, wouldn't have been put together like you see here. Um, I do this with puzzles and as you can see with the stacking toy, um, everything is unstacked and kind of laid out. This allows it to be more inviting for the child to want to put it together rather than just coming in and already be, being put together. Also when I have small pieces like you see here these rubber bands, I keep those in a container that my three-year-old can open but that my one-year-old cannot get into. And I do try to supervise when I have activities like this out to make sure that my one-year-old isn't getting into it. Um, this is a love every activity that um, comes with these carrots that you can, a posting activity that you can put them in this box. And I like to put it in this little um, basket with the lid because that gives another element to it. Here is um, a puzzle that's displayed unfinished like I was talking about before. And then below I have some stacking cups and another love every um, game. This one is a little bug game. Just a little activity where they can take the bugs out and stick them around the side. And here I have the Montessori cylinders. These I have displayed again unfinished so it's more inviting for my three-year-old to want to come and um, do this activity and put it together. And on this bottom shelf I have a sliding ball box that my one-year-old has been loving for quite some time now. This is another love every toy. And the next item on our shelf is this garbage truck. This is a new addition. Lincoln got this as an early Christmas present. So he has been loving this, so it gets its own spot on our shelf. Then below here, we usually have our musical instruments. There's a couple here. It looks like we might be missing a few that have wandered around the house. And we have our drum and then up here we have a basket for our vehicle. So these are just some various vehicles that I have out. This is probably the number one thing that my three-year-old loves to play with. I do try to choose vehicles that are more realistic looking. And the last thing on this part of the playroom is our basket of wooden roads. These are from the brand Guidecraft and my boys have been having a really good time with these roads lately so we keep those out so that they can kind of explore and build and um, play with their vehicles on the roads. In our playroom we have a window with a little ledge on it so over here I have put a mirror this was for Link Lucas more when he was um, a baby I can't believe he is already 14 months but he does still enjoy looking at the mirror a little bit and now I've added some um, just pictures that are more at his height because he's not walking yet he's still crawling so he has been really into bugs lately so that's why they are bug pictures then up here I have this um, gas station that both of the boys enjoy playing with with their cars and I have this road tape up here um, Lincoln has enjoyed playing with the road tape as well and he even put his own road tape down here on the floor so we have lots of road options um, then we have this ball run from love every that um, actually both the boys love playing with this so I keep that out here for them and the final area um, in our downstairs playroom is our craft area so this is just where we can store and display their crafts and artwork. Um, on this wall, I have hung two hooks to have a place to put any dress up items that we have. Um, we have a few. We also have like our backpack and then there's a mail carrier bag that we got from a KiwiCo box. And then on the other hook is like um, a superhero cape and a construction worker vest and a train hat. Then I have a chalkboard here. It's at child height so that they can access uh, the chalkboard if they ever want to do chalk. And moving over, I have our craft station. 
This is the IKEA table with the sensory bins underneath so we can do sensory play. And above it, I have the IKEA pegboard. Um, this pegboard is great because it has so many different options that you can choose from of things that um, you want to add to it. So I have the little clips to display their artwork. And then below I have a tray that has some of their paper cutters as well as the um, eraser for the chalkboard. And up above I have another clip as well as a container that holds their glue. And below that, um, these containers have chalk for the chalkboard, um, some pom-pom balls, and then this is a crayon egg that I've been having my one-year-old use to try to experiment with coloring. Below that, um, some containers to hold color pencils, um, crayons, and paint brushes. So that's what I've got out for them to access. Now my three-year-old is the only one that can reach this at the moment. Um, my one-year-old cannot reach any of those items. And at the very top, I have another IKEA storage um, system that neither of the boys can reach. And this is where I keep just some other things. Those are small pom-poms. Um, this has some Play-Doh in it. This one has some washcloths in case we need to clean up with popsicle sticks. The next one is just a random, you know, it's got these um, grabbers and a little measuring cup and color um, paddles, so just a mix of things in that one. And this one has buttons and um, these coins and as well as just these hooks that go on the pegboard. I keep those up here as well. And the last one just has some more crayons. So yeah, that's what we have in our art area. And I want to say that this has been a buildup over time. I didn't just immediately put out all of these art supplies. Um, I've put them out strategically as my son has been able to show more and more responsibility with not using um, them incorrectly. Um, I also have a little poster over here of just some fun winter activities. I'll change this out um, when winter or Christmas is over for something different, but this is at his level, so he likes to come over here and just see what are some of the things that we do around the Christmas time. And below that, I have this push wagon from Ikea with some baby dolls in it for my one-year-old to push around to help him with walking. So yeah, that is our playroom. And one other thing I wanted to add is when you're setting up a Montessori playroom, the most important thing to do is to follow your child. So make sure you're observing what works best for you in your space. Um, observe how your child is using the space and see what their interests are. Um, so our playroom is constantly changing because of this. And as my three-year-old and one-year-old get older, the playroom will continue to grow and change with them. Okay, moving upstairs. I'm so excited to show you guys this space. If you've watched any of my other videos, you may recognize the background with the nugget and the tent. Um, I usually film in this room, um, but I have recently just changed it a little bit and included a few other items. So I'm gonna show, take you through a little tour of the playroom. You might notice this netting on the railing and I've added that to keep the toys and the balls from the ball pit from all going downstairs. We were having just so much fun throwing the balls downstairs, but I was not having fun having to keep bringing them up. Um, I recently put this train table up here. I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep it, but it's here for now. Um, so the train table, was in our playroom downstairs, but I wanted to give them more of an open space downstairs, so I moved it up here. So we've got train tracks, some other train buildings, and the train cars all in the baskets below. And this train table we actually got secondhand, so it's a little bit beat up, but it's been working great for us. And both of the boys still love playing with it, so I'm not gonna get rid of it yet. The next thing we have is our tent, and what I've done is I've put the ball pit inside. The ball pit used to be where the train table was, but it, I noticed that they weren't really using the tent all that much, but now that the ball pit is inside the tent, they love it. Um, they have so much fun in here, so this was like a great idea <laughs> to do that. Next area is our nugget. If you do not know what the nugget is, I 
suggest you look into it because we have so much fun with our nugget couch. It can pull out to really be anything you can imagine, a fort, a slide, whatever. So the boys love to jump on this. Um, I do have a little bit of artwork at the top there, really more for me, for the aesthetic of the room again, but I think it looks cute for this space. And um, moving over where the window is, we have a balance board, or sometimes these are called wobble boards, but both of the boys really enjoy using this. We use it a lot for like pretend play with cars, um, but the boys also like just sitting on it and climbing on it. Then this is where we have our books up here. Now I don't have them stored in a traditional like Montessori forward facing bookshelf just because I haven't found where I could put that up here, but we do sometimes come in here and sit in the nugget and read books. So I wanted to have a space where we could keep some books and we had this little wagon that wasn't being used. So I put them in there. Um, and then on this wall, we have our pickler triangle and our play tunnel. So these items I don't always have set up, but you can see I can easily take them out and set them up for the boys to be able to play and climb over or I can put pop the tunnel out and they can have fun in that as well. And the last thing in this space is this car track that Lincoln got for Christmas last year. I decided to include this as well since we had the train tracks, but overall it is mostly movement things with the ball pit and the pickler triangle and the nugget. And this space has honestly been used so much since I set it up. It's been so helpful for the days that I need the boys to be upstairs while I'm getting some chores done or when it's cold and rainy outside. It's a great place to come to get out our energy. Thank you guys so much for watching my Montessori playroom tour. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I make new videos just like this every week. And also please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear where you guys are from and how many kids you have. So just leave that down below. I try to respond to all of my comments. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.